Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in science, astronomy, and telescope. Well, I know some of you watch a couple other YouTubers, which is great because I watch them too. Anyway, I'm back at my Bortle 2 or gray zone, which is kind of like the second darkest zone. It takes me about two and a half hours from my location in the city to come out here. And it's a nice summer day. It is clear. The Milky Way is gorgeous. It's branching off into two arms. You know, one going towards the teacup or Sagittarius. And then the other one going a little bit higher up above the Altar uh, constellation. Oh, just saw a shooting star, which is always cool. It was like a, a fast one. It just went for like, uh, you know, like five degrees. Sometimes they go very long type of thing. But uh, anyway, here's a nice cluster for you guys to look at. I'm sure a lot of you have looked at it many times before, which is fine. And for you new people, you got to look at M11. It's a very nice cluster in the constellation of Altar or Aquila. So, of course, I'm using the Dobson, I'm using the Star Sense. <clears throat> I'm only using one red light so you can see me, but it's not blinding me and I can kind of see the, the dim stuff. So, let's get to this constellation here and uh, let's take a look. I'm going to use a low power, always start low and then I always go a little bit up until it looks nice. Okay, so M11, let's see how it looks with a low power 38 millimeter and see if we need lower, see if we need higher. Okay, and a 38 millimeter, very clearly seen. Here's one thing, and I'm sure you guys can probably agree. Now this open cluster, oh, that's kind of cool. You can see, uh, I haven't seen it in a long time. Have you guys seen a fireflies? Let me see if I can show it to you. There, there. It's cool. Like, um, I, I haven't seen too many fireflies. I don't know why. Um, but, and it's just one. It's just one guy. Here, I'm just walking. But yeah, it's definitely kind of cool. Anyway, okay, let's get back to uh, that firefly threw me off. You know, I, I haven't seen them. I don't know why. Uh, kind of haven't seen them much it's been years since I've seen fireflies. Maybe it's bad timing, uh, weather, I don't know. Anyway, so what's nice about this guy, just looking at it, it just refreshed my memory, is that it's an open cluster, but looks like almost like a globular cluster. It's so tight and it has so many stars that you guys definitely should look at this one. If you haven't. Yeah, very nice. Very tight. Lots of stars. <coughs> I guess that's why it's like a top 10 item as well. Okay, let's push the power like to a medium with a 13 Nagler. Wow, in a 13 Nagler, it looks amazing. You can really see every star and it probably fits half the field of view that I'm looking at through. Or maybe not quite half, but a nice chunk. So let's put a 6.7. I'm gonna go really high on this cluster. Even in a 6.7 ultra wide angle, it definitely still looks good. Pinpoint, still lots of stars. Now it fills up almost a whole view. So definitely something to look at. Okay guys, so this next part, I'm just gonna tell you what I saw because I believe my uh, camera died and I didn't notice. 
Um, okay, so the next object that I think you guys should be looking at that I think I really like is the coat hanger cluster. I also call it the J cluster because it looks like a coat hanger, I guess. Also looks like a inverted J, which stands for Joe Jaguar. So that's perfect. Now this cluster, you need to use low power. So either binoculars, finder scopes, or I think all of you guys, if you don't have already a low power telescope, something like the 80 millimeter short tube refractor or a 90 millimeter short tube refractor. There are a couple um, low power reflecting telescopes as well that you could use something like a 114 millimeter F5 could do the trick. Uh, I guess an astro scan. I believe the Skywatcher Heritage 130 and 150 and it's the same telescope as the uh, Astronomers Without Borders. Uh, one is uh, similar as well. So anything like that is perfect for the coat hanger. I call it a J cluster. So take a look. It needs low power, so it doesn't fit in a big telescope or something with a large focal length. But take a look at that one as our second. Um, now the third item is fairly close-ish to M11, which is the wild duck cluster. So it's called M26 in a no and in a low power. You know, you can definitely see it, I think in most telescopes, depending on your light pollution and how big of a scope you have, but M26 is definitely easy to see. The only downfall a little bit is there's no, like star hopping is a little bit harder because there's no bright stars to kind of tell you where to go unless you have something like a go-to or the star sense or the astro hopper. But definitely it's a nice cluster bump up the power and it definitely looks like brighter. Uh, it's not a huge cluster, uh, but it's a medium compactness type of uh, in the middle. Uh, so you guys should like it and it's nice in telescopes. Anyway guys, so that's it for this episode. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you know anybody getting in the hobby, please share my link, my channel. If you're on the forums and have Maybe someone's asked a video that I have, please share my link if you don't mind. I also have members videos where once a month I post a video just for the members. It doesn't go on the uh, regular channel. It's only 99 cents a month. If you'd like to join that, that'd be great. Anyway, why not you? Why not me?